Tuesday, June 16th, and what a day it's turning out to be for the markets. Uh, I'm sure you've checked the futures. Everything's up around 2% across the board, which would be enough to erase the drop from last Thursday. So pretty exciting stuff. A lot of positive headlines out there that we will get to here in a second. Our mission objectives, we're gonna grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. Today, we're gonna to talk about short interest, which is something we've talked a little bit about before, and I've highlighted six stocks, which you can kind of see below there, that have heavy short interest. And we're gonna talk about the, yeah, the mine too, predator, yes, sir. Uh, we're gonna talk about short squeezes, and how that kind of wraps into, that's more of a short-term thing. Um, so it's more of that income generation on days like today when your portfolio is printing money uh, for your long-term. But on short-term, are there moves you can make to possibly make a few bucks uh, along the way? Uh, I think so, and that's what we're gonna talk about. For our standard flow, we're gonna go uh, long, short, open, short, long. We'll hit the uh, marker view, the headlines out there. There's quite a few today. There's our six names we're gonna talk about, most of which you should recognize. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is the only one that we haven't, I don't think, talked about on this show yet, and that's that BBBY. Uh, we'll get into the day trading. We'll have our challenge. We are going to beat the Predator today. Uh, somebody in the room is, and I would like it to be me. And then if you have any contingencies, there's the email account and the disclaimer down at the bottom. If you have any questions, um, you can send those in. All right, let's go ahead and go to the TD Ameritrade and we will take a look at where we've been for the past year. We kind of looked at the, the uh, channel, you know, we talked about the channel trade 275 to 295 and then it was kind of whether we're gonna hold 300 was kind of the big number. And you saw yesterday, the market action started down and then of course we had some positive headlines and it went started screaming back higher. Uh, through the rest of the day. So it appears the 300 level will have held from a technical standpoint, but uh, today's move, I bet you we are back uh, above where the uh, we were on that Thursday drop, but we'll have to see. Uh, we don't know for sure. So it uh, depends on how big of a day we're going to have today. All right, let's go to the next chart and we'll look at yes, the action for the past couple of days. So hit the spy there. All right five minutes. Okay, so there's where you can kind of see. There's the uh, the big drop down on Thursday and then Friday also finished uh, in the red there. And then yesterday pretty much uh, was had gapped down and then started straight up all day. And you can almost draw a line from yesterday's open all the way to where we are today, right? With, <laughs> with going straight up. So we'll see how much further it has to run today. Okay, go ahead and hit the calendar real quick. Uh, the only, what I thought was, the only thing that jumped out of, at me from earnings was Lennar last night, which is ticker L-E-N. It's a home builder, uh, one of many. I wouldn't call them best of breed. I would say Meritage is, but um, that's the only one I've held. But Lennar is a home builder. They crushed their, and it was yesterday's, uh, last night's earnings. They they beat their uh, earnings significantly. So that was a great news from the home building uh, sort of thing. So let's Go ahead and head over to the CNBC and we'll go around the world real quick. You see where the pre-market is for us over 900 points. So very nice. Check out Europe. Uh, Europe in the green uh, across the board there. Pretty significant as well, over 3%. And then when you hit Asia, you can see that Japan was up almost 5%. So, and again, I think a lot of it was the Fed yesterday when they started talking about, um, you know, the buying individual bonds, which they had kind of said that before, then they walked it back a little bit. So to clarify that real quick is the, the Fed had said they were going to prop up the bond market by going in and buying individual bonds. And what they ended up doing was they only did primary market stuff, which is new issue. And a lot of companies did new issue bonds, but they didn't do anything for the fallen angels, if you will, which is a term used for bonds that are investment grade or were investment grades that fall out of investment grade that all the ETFs and mutual funds now now have to drop. So it's the, the fallen angels weren't helped at all. So if you had a bond portfolio out there, you didn't see a lot of that move up that we expected to, to see there. So it's kind of 
kind of crazy. But now that the Fed did that, again, across the world uh, is what we're seeing, some good news out there. All right, let's head over to look at yesterday's numbers. There you can see where we finished in the green across the board. I will point your eyes over to the VIX. If you remember me saying yesterday that on down days, because that's how we started, sometimes you can put a trade in to uh, basically put a floor uh, on the VIX and just take it long. You probably won't get 3R. Well, and I said, made the comment, is the VIX going to hold 40 today? And not only did it hold 40, I mean, it crashed, if you will, down to 32 or so. Um, so even today, I could see the VIX even dropping below 30 if we have such an amazing day that we're kind of set up for. But, you know, don't forget, just like yesterday, we thought it was going to be a down day and it turned positive. Uh, things can happen. So we don't know what the headlines hold uh, from there. All right, over to bonds. Good news in the bonds market. They interpreted that uh, the Fed's um, input there as a very positive thing. So you can see the 10-year at least going back north towards that 1%. Uh, oil did have some good news there as well uh, with uh, OPEC out there. So they're back at 38.64. So maybe it gets to 40 today. Wouldn't that be nice? And that would be what's called normal. And then gold, uh, even, the, even the metals were up yesterday. So pretty much you couldn't miss yesterday. All right, let's go back to the main screen and we'll go through some headlines. Okay, sitting at 912 up there, we got the, uh, looking almost a thousand. Let's see. Uh, record number of investors believe stocks are overvalued. Well, I tell you what, uh, okay, is all I can say. There, there are so many people out there that are so negative, that are so scared, and I don't know, it's just, I, I think that's what happens to folks. But yeah, sure. Um, yeah, especially people who answer surveys, right? You can make parallels there to other things. But yeah, and they'll they'll stay out of the market and they'll miss the big run and, you know, good for them. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, uh, let's see what else we have. Scrolling down here. There's the uh, retail sales surge. If you didn't see that, 17.7%. That is a record uh, number there for retail. And we're going to talk about a couple of retail names today. All right, continue scrolling. Uh, some of the biggest calls of the day down there, uh, we have NVIDIA got a downgrade, which is like uh, swearing in church. I mean, that just doesn't happen. It's one of the best chip maker out there pretty much, and it's been too expensive to really own, and that was why it got downgraded. Uh, that's a tough one to ever downgrade. Um, same thing, Cisco has some uh, good news um, headline with it today. I can't remember what it was offhand, but they did. Uh, so expect good things out of them. All right, see what else we got. The Disruptor 50's out. Stripe is the who I use for the online payment program. They're kind of um, a new name to me, if you will. All right, keep going. Uh, yeah, last one I'll talk about is that police reform. Uh, that's again, a, I think everybody considers that a good news story. I don't know what's in it. It'll be interesting to read what sort of reform, reform they're looking at. But the fact that there is some reform coming out will probably be a positive good news story for the country. I'm sure it won't be perfect, but it should at least uh, uh, put something out there to maybe help uh, quell the social uh, unrest that we've kind of been dealing with. So, all right, you can go back to the top there and take us over to uh, Schwab, and we'll talk about short interest. Okay, so those are the names we're going to talk about. First one, GME. Um, actually, uh, let's go to the uh, internet and pull up that large short interest page. I'm gonna share something out with you guys. It's an interesting, so high short interest. Sorry, I used the wrong term there. Um, check that out, right? So this is, I, you know, they have their disclaimer that we don't promise this is perfect, but uh, how cool is this, right? So you can see GameStop's, and these are four of the names I picked. So GameStop sitting there at 90, almost 99% of the float is short. And I know Predator, you've talked about uh, shorting uh, GameStop, uh, especially with the new PS5 coming out. Uh, another, so anyhow, this is here. So if you're ever looking for um, 
short interest to see if whatever stock you might possibly uh, be, be in play for the day. This is one of those websites you could check in the morning. So let's bring that back down. We will go back to the Schwab uh, platform and kind of continue on our uh, conversation. I didn't put Chesapeake up there. I put LK up instead. LK is also a uh, 40%, but uh, upper left GameStop, you kind of know the story there and it's pretty much a hated name. But when you think of with 98% short, those people don't forget, have to buy that stock back at some point. Remember, they borrowed it. Now they got to buy it back at some point. So I think that's maybe what we saw in Hertz and uh, Chesapeake and some other names that it was like, who's buying the stock? Well, it might be the short sellers having to buy it back. So kind of interesting. Um, match MTCH is match.com. Obviously, that's the uh, online stuff. So it's really kind of run up pretty high. It's short interest is 73%. So I'm thinking that's probably new short interest where GameStop has probably been long time short interest. So that could be a stock that's on the move. Uh, <clears throat> so it also has the hard to borrow tag, which means heavily shorted, right? So that tells you that if you go to short it, when you click your, when you click your uh, tick, ticket that's open, you may get the oop, unable, and you don't know that until you click it. If there's a way to find out ahead of time, I will have to ask. I think I can call the custodian and ask pre-market, but uh, that'll be more advanced for uh, for down the road. Okay, uh, let's look at Bed Bath & Beyond. I think they've been dying on the vine for a long time now. Um, I Largely replaced by Amazon. You can get almost all that same stuff uh, delivered to your house, so why wouldn't you unless you need it today sort of thing. So they're sitting at 62% short interest. Uh, the one off to the right is SKT, which is kind of interesting because uh, that is uh, tang uh, t Tanger, Tanger, I, don't know, I think it's Tanger, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced, but Tanger uh, Outlets, so the outlet mall space, which has been kind of beat up anyway, crushed by COVID, it might actually pop pretty significant today. Um, and that was the first thing I looked at was, out of my notes, was SKT Long. They are 53% short interest, and we just got a huge retail number of 17.7%. So I would not be surprised to see them run 10, 20% higher uh, today. So that's probably what I'm looking at for long uh, when we get to the short, when we get into the uh, day trading stuff. Um, LK, when you look at a LK, 42% short interest. Now, I don't know how often short interest is updated. I, I came across, and we'll talk about it later on the Investopedia page, it says that the NASDAQ updates twice a week, twice a month, and the others only update it once a month. So we could be looking at old data. So that's something I will have to keep uh, keep thinking about to see if I can find out for sure uh, about that information. So um, back to LK, obviously they there's a big threat of all the Chinese stocks being delisted. Here's my take on particularly the Chinese stocks because there's a couple that are in play uh, today. IQ is one of them is up like 40%. And that's the Chinese Netflix, if you will, is I think the Chinese theme is going to go off of President Trump's plate. He's got enough with the election, the social unrest, COVID-19. You know, we got the infrastructure bill coming out today, which I didn't see in the headlines. Obviously, that's going to be a net positive. I think he's going to drop the China thing Largely, you know, he's been tough enough, so where he's not going to get any more, more uh, money out of that, if you will, so uh, or any more, um, you know, credit for that. So that's why I think we're seeing the Chinese stocks kind of pop up there. Um, so that's okay. It's down at four dollars. It's gapping up to I think it was up uh, ten percent or so pre-market. We'll check it here shortly and see what it's going to do. But forty percent short interest. So again, a lot of folks are going to get squeezed on this, and that's what I'm looking for at LK. And I do think it has value um, up greater than 10. Okay, and the last one is Tesla, which is just interesting because if you've ever tried to short this stock, I have. Uh, you generally have been burned. I have, uh, and it hurt badly. It was, it's just too hard to short, right? So even at almost $1,000 a share, now it will assuredly be above 1,000 today with this kind of move. It's got an 11% short. And when you think of short squeeze, it, goodness, I mean, these people are losing money hand over fist if you try to short Tesla, I mean, because it can scream higher. 
So it kind of defies logic, but that's kind of where we're at on the um, short interest. Just as a point of reference, I didn't put it up here. We don't need to pull the charts, but when you think of, you know, a, st a stock like Tesla that some consider, you know, best of breed, wave of the future, that sort of thing, it's got an 11% short float, but pick a couple of names that most people agree are, I tried to think of like the two most popular no brainer investments out there. So I picked Apple and Amazon and I looked at the short float and uh, Apple's is less than 1% and so is Amazon's less than 1%. So it's kind of uh, <laughs> telling that everybody, you know, it's, it's almost a way to vote, you know, the market voting for the strength of those holdings. I wanna show you one thing real quick on FinViz. So let's pull that up. Uh, I wanna show you where to find this if it's something that you wanna take a look at. Um, I've got LK Coffee, uh, Luck and Coffee pulled up here. And if you look off to the right side or well, where the cursor is there, there's the 42%, if you will. Um, there are some ratios that we'll talk about later. And there's also, you know, days to cover that sort of thing. But, you know, that's where your uh, eyeballs can find that information. Okay, let's uh, bring that down and head over to the uh, big board at Schwab. And we'll go through the tabs real quick. Um, let's, I'm going to pull up the names that I've got first. So let's hit SKT. Okay, again, this is your Tanger Factory Outlets, if I'm saying that correctly. So, whoa. Okay, it closed at 771. It's up at a $9 now. So quick math tells me, I don't know, 15% or so. So that's already moved up. I do think that if it hasn't gapped up too far, I think that's going to be my top play today. Uh, we shall see. So that's one by one on my list. Let's put CHK up there. CHK was in the news today that they are on the verge of filing for bankruptcy. But uh, there are some players out there that may buy them. So there's, this is kind of, it's too hard to tell um, what's going to happen here. So they closed at 1887 um, and down, looks like they're gapping down to 1805 now. So uh, we shall see. We'll also see um, with that kind of action, I would assume, you know, you would assume Chesapeake's going lower, but with, with suitors out there that may pop, potentially buy them, we'll have to keep an eye on that. So uh, that would be a short story. Let's pull up our, actually it won't be there. So there's an IPO today. Um, it's Royal Pharma. It's RPR, ticker RPRX. If you were going to sit there all day long today, um, wait for the IPO. It's supposed to be the largest IPO of the year. Um, larger than the previous IPO this year was Warner Music, which WMG, um, which I didn't participate in. Um, the and the second largest pharmaceutical IPO of all time, and so big deal coming down. So RPRX when that opens, generally they open around noon Eastern. There's no hard time. You just kind of have to have the ticker symbol pulled up on the chart, and it sits there dead, and all of a sudden the chart springs to life. Obviously, if you're not uh, if you're not accredited and get shares through the IPO, as soon as it comes online, though, pretty much every IPO that's been had, if you buy it when it opens and you can almost scalp it, that people are going to buy it who couldn't get shares in the IPO are going to get it now that it's on a secondary. So you can almost scalp the opening, uh, if you would. You know, tight stop there, so only risk you one R, but you could let that run for uh, three three take half off three hours take half off and then kind of see where it goes um from there okay so you can say upsized uh i'm looking at the headline seven seventy seven point seven million share ipo at 28 dollars. i think they had originally targeted at 25 so you know we'll see i i, I could see that thing in the 40s today if nothing more than nobody's got <clears throat> you know that's the new and exciting shiny penny which is not a reason to invest in a stock, but it can be a reason to uh, trade a stock. Okay, and the last one we'll pull up is uh, LEN from the stuff uh, notes I had taken pre-market. Okay, again, this is Lenar, the home builder. Uh, closed at 63.50, it's up at a, uh, well, yeah, big, big bid ask spread there, 50 cents, so. Uh, that's kind of interesting, but it's definitely on the way up. That looks, I don't know, maybe three, four percent or so, but something to keep an eye on. Uh, while we're here, click that gapping up headline on the left. See what else pops up. There's that IQ up at 35 cents with the uh, 10 cent holdings taken over a little bit there. Um, I wouldn't touch that. It's moved up already too much. 
Okay, that's enough on that. Let's check out the uh, top 10 by volume. You got IQ, we've already talked about 36% on the move up. Uh, American Airlines gapping up, uh, 11% there. Again, I wouldn't touch that. You've got NEO, the Jap uh, excuse me, Chinese uh, EV. That stock just keeps going up and up and up and up. Uh, I wouldn't touch that long, but it certainly fits the, uh, fits the profile that we're looking for. Uh, Macy's, again, I wouldn't necessarily touch it. I don't know. Let's see how far it's beat down. Put M uh, over on the left there. Okay, 719 up to 820. Yeah, let's put Macy's long as something, at least just to keep an eye on. We'll circle back to it. Um, you know, pretty impressive. I think, uh, what's that, eight days ago? It was all the way up at 11, so we'll keep an eye on it. Not going to track a cruise line. Not going to track uh, UAL either. All right, let's go to the next tab. All right, again, looking for 100,000 in volume. That's Tesla up at uh, 1020 there, so up 2.53%. Again, I wouldn't touch that, but the higher it goes, the more they're going to get squeezed. Got Amazon down there up 1.6. Uh, BlackRock is stands to, they don't have the volume to be able to trade it, but obviously it, it, if you have shares of BlackRock, you should just do a cartwheel or something because they are the single biggest benefactor of the Fed's decision to buy individual bonds. So not only were they the benefactor of that when the stock was at like 395, uh, when the Fed announced their um, <clears throat> their intent to buy the individual bonds is now that the stock is what, 565 and going higher, um, the Fed doesn't get in there and buy bonds. They have to pay somebody to do it. And who they're paying is BlackRock not BlackRock and several others, they are just paying BlackRock. They have the 100% contract to do that. That is like printing money. So um, good name to have long, but not to trade. Let's go to the decliners. So if we find anything moving down, let's say I'd written down Chesapeake short possibly, we'll see. All right, bunch of trading vehicles. Teladoc Health doesn't have the volume. Uh, Zoom video. Only gapping down a percent or so. So nothing's really jumping off the page short there. Okay, let's look at uh, the next tab there. Philip 66, gapping up almost 20%. Again, the oil name should be on the move higher today. Macy's up 15%. Tanger up 17%. We talked about SKT long. I may take a look at that myself. Mesa Rich is a REIT, 14%. Uh, Again, that's retails pulling that up. Kohl's is an interesting one, up 13%. Put Click on a KSS. This is a stock that you almost always short <laughs> because they, uh, they get, it seems like they get crushed. Um, back that chart out a little bit and see what we can see from their long-term. So yeah, so not too long ago, they were up at 30, that's good enough. Um, you know, all the way down, lost basically 35% of their value in the past, what, week and a half. Um, oof, it's already gapped up a lot. I, I'm gonna put it down on my watch list. I'm not gonna take it long, but uh, Kohl's has a nice big juicy dividend. They have the relationship with Amazon. It kind of defies logic that, that that stock would not go higher. But all right, uh, while you, I just saw BIG go in there, so let's put uh, BIG. We'll take a look at that's Big Lots. I do happen to like uh, Big Lots, and I know some other folks in the room do too. So they closed at 35, they're up around ooh, low volume. So that'd be a little bit risky there, um, but they're up, uh, almost a dollar spread between 35 and a half and 36 and a half. We'll, uh, we'll write it down. We'll keep an eye on it. That'd be one where you'd have to sit and wait for the volume to kind of rush in. Oh, there you go. I see the trade coming in there, but um, uh, in it too. Yeah, you should have the volume by, uh, by the two minute point there. All right, let's uh, look at the last tab for us here. Midcon Energy up 172%. Uh, good for them. Don't know who they are. 
They're having a big day. A lot of names I don't recognize. Weight Watchers, WW is on the way up. After we come out of our quarantine 15 pounds, <laughs> we've tacked on. Avis budget group. So Avis is on the way up. While we're talking about Avis, let's pull Hertz HTZ on the chart. So down at a buck 88, gapping up to 211 or so. Again, uh, basically in bankruptcy. If you saw the, saw the headline yesterday, I kind of like that gap up though. Um, I'm going to write down Hertz short. I may do that with a larger kind of spread just to uh, just to let it run a little bit. I don't see it backing up much higher since they they issued the um, they issued more stock and then they basically came out that same day and said, and this was yesterday, that anybody buying the stock can really expect the the value to be zero. It's like, well, that's an interesting way to pump your own stock, uh, but they did. They moved it out to everybody, so. Uh, Hertz would be a short story. Uh, I think that's it. We got four minutes. Let me take a look at this real here, real quick, and we'll put it on the other chart in a second. But I, I kind of like that with a little bit of safety built into it. All right. Uh, Baidu is B I D U. That's a Chinese name. It's gapping up 10%. And again, a lot of the uh, Chinese names are. Okay. Let's go over to TD Ameritrade. We'll set up our charts. Let's uh, put uh, BIG in the left. Let's put SKT in the middle and HTZ on the right. And actually instead of SKT, since that's already gapped up almost 20%, let's put CHK, Chesapeake in the middle there. And again, so that would be, we're looking at uh, big lots long, I believe, yep, for you, uh, Predator. And then we've got Chesapeake short and Hertz short. All right. Let me type my trade in here. Haven't seen Burner yet. Hopefully he uh, hops in. He's usually good for a trade jumper. You can hop in with the trade if you'd like. Chinook is on vacation and so is Geech. All right, Hertz short. 2019 is the pre-market high, it's at 2014. I'll give it 10 cents, 0 0.10. And I will take it at the five minute point, five minute in. So I want to give it time to chill and out at 15 minutes. Okay, there is my trade. And again, a uh, nice delayed entry, kind of let it do its thing. I'm always tempted, especially when it's sitting there at 215, uh, like it is again, talking about Hertz on the right. Um, if you know, if sitting there, but I do expect some short covering since we kind of talked about that. So it could run up before it starts to fall off. Uh, that is also one that I would want to call the trade real time, um, depending on what I saw after it opened. So um, if anybody's going to take that real time, I'll be talking to that. Okay, uh, let's see what else we can get. I'm gonna, on a different screen. I'm checking the markets real quick to see how the market's working for us. Okay, Dow's up uh, 840 going into the market open here. Um, so that's a drop from almost a thousand from where it was. So if the market kind of sells off, then that will help the shorts out and it will not help the longs, of course. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what the scoop is with Matt. I see that in the chat there. I, I don't know why they're hated maybe Maybe there's just too many competitors now because <laughs> it seems like there's a you know a thousand different ways to be online, but 
and I don't know how they make their money. I don't know if you, that's something you pay for, if that's one of the free ones or, or how it works. So, okay, there's our opening bell. So again, uh, only two trades to look at for the competition today. Uh, so we'll see kind of, you can watch the volume at the bottom of the uh, big, so you can see it's almost 30,000 in that first minute there. Um, and again, that's a long, so it's a great move down for you, uh, 30 cents or so, so I like that. Looking over at Hertz, it's a good move for me because there's that short covering that's running up all the way to 225 or so. So anybody who took that out of the gate is already going to be right back out of that trade. Um, so that's why it pays to wait. So zoom in a little bit on Chesapeake as well, kind of see what's going on there. Not nearly as much volume. Okay, opened 800 points up on the Dow, so things are just kind of trading sideways here for a second. All right, big setting up actually pretty nice for that long. So if you get a nice move down here, uh, Predator, then uh, you get the opening at the uh, at the next bar will be 832. So we'll see where you open. Get our drawing tools ready to track your trade first. Hertz is flopping around a lot over there. So, And Chesapeake's just basically striping down like a company that's announcing bankruptcy should, right? So pretty much if anybody who took uh, Chesapeake out of the out of the gates, darn near at three R's right now. When you hear me talk about striping down, that's it. That's a stripe. <laughs> that's a 90, 90 cents in a minute is that stripe on uh, Chesapeake there. Okay, so there's the open for the Predator 3551. And let's see, put a 20 cent stop. So on the downside, that's off the chart. We don't need to draw that to the upside. 35.51 plus 60 is 36.11, if my math on the fly is right. So that'd be nice, and that makes perfect sense. So just a great entry there. Uh, so as long as it holds, it should easily run back up to that, um, to the 3R point, as long as the market kind of keeps going long for you. So we'll, yep, 8.12 on the Dow. So Again, not working against you. So I think that's a great entry predator. Got to be pretty happy with that. Chesapeake continues. It's already off a dollar from where it went in. All right, we have till 10 minutes. Now well, there's a big working against you. So uh, let's see, 3531 would be the lower stop for you. So you can probably draw that on there. So that's the level it's got to hold. Getting kind of close, with, but hey, if it holds, it holds, right? So, all right, waiting on the five minute point for the entry on Hertz, which is now striping down. That's another one. If you're watching Hertz real time, which I was watching uh, chess, or I was watching that uh, big, did you get that kind of triple top there for the first couple of minutes at the Hertz level? And boy, you put that in, at, short it there to uh, 22, the 10 cent stop. Uh, that is, uh, that's a quick, quick three R trade if you get the entry. We'll see where it is around the five minute point once we get there. Okay, I'll have the next bar in Hertz if you wanna zoom in just a touch there.
Yeah, and you, you know, when you get right to it, it does. You would have to actually check your to see if you got knocked out of it or not when it, it's right there, because down there you would definitely be out of the uh, the big lots trade. Okay, there's my open at two o three. So two o three is my open over in Hertz. I gave it ten cents, so two thirteen. Yeah, um, going up to two thirteen for my ten cent stop. I tell you, that's the uh, when I did this live there, Predator. Yeah, you're sitting there watching it go right up against your stop over and over, and you're like, "Come on, <laughs> just hold," because you know if it holds, it'll probably go, it'll reverse back high, right? So, all right, let's uh, let's check Chesapeake now. It looks like that one has uh, stopped updating, so we may have to zoom out and zoom back in on it since it's only got the three bars there, or it's halted. I can check that on another screen real quick. Uh, C H K. It certainly appears halted, and it would hit its. Uh, I can't remember the rules offhand. Now oh, my internet's slow. I see it in the in the chat that it's halted there. So thanks for confirming that. Uh, let's see, what was it in the first 15 minutes? There were different rules. I think it was 10. Uh, <laughs> no, that's, that could be, actually, when you think about it, if you're short uh, Chesapeake here and it's got halted on the downside, you're, you're loving that. Because, um, man, it, uh, once that opens back up after, I think, five minutes, I have to look up those rules again. But, yeah, once that opens back up, that thing will probably drop like a, lot, a rock. Now you may see some people covering right there, but certainly you're going to be nowhere near if you entered at the open up in the north of 17. You're going to be nowhere near um, that level again. So, so Hertz is our only live trade that is open. It's kind of bouncing around there. I'm currently in the red on that, so we'll keep an eye on that. Let's bring the uh, overall market in and take a look at the long names because we're all slapping high fives about uh, what's going on along here today. Oh, so Chesapeake's uh, back open there. So we'll, okay, no, it's the spy. Sorry. Um, so yep, there's how the spy. You see, it did drop there at the beginning, and now it's on its way back up. And let's go all the way over to the left and look at the big screen as far as the uh, individual names are in the green and red for the day. All right, some options there at the top. You got Boeing up eight percent. High fives there. Neo, we already talked about. DALs Delta. You got Blackstone Mortgage Trust up, again, combined with the uh, good news retail, because they loan a lot to those real comp retail companies, as well as uh, the good housing number, because they also have that in their portfolio as well. ITA is a defense ETF that uh, I use, so 4.63%, that's great. You got Southwest in there, you got LK up 6%. We'll check in on LK a little bit later. Uh, let's see, watching the SPY, if you look at the middle chart there, you can see it's moving up pretty significant. Um, for Hertz, though, checking that out, if you were to add, you know, because you're in a small, when you're down to $2 range, you can pick up like a 1,000 shares um, <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, that's one of those that, I mean, you could even add right here with that almost quadruple top um, and give it up to, you know, an, another 10 cents above that from there. So. Anyhow, it's kind of setting up nice. Looks like Chesapeake is back open. Did I see that stripe down? I think. So now you're talking $2 move down from 17 down to 15 on a hated name. So yeah, pretty much anywhere you entered that short is uh, going to be high fives. So Hertz is backing up. So we'll see how that works out. And the red names have uh, DraftKings actually down. How could DraftKings be down on an up day where everything else is? Uh, that's kind of funny. And then SPTL is Treasury. So again, those would be selling off as people bring money back in from the sidelines and put it back to work. See Activision in there, Shopify. Again, those are hardly moving, so I wouldn't be sweating that either. So let's go back to the green names because that's more fun to look at. Okay, so it looks like Chesapeake's still halted here. But the move, the spy is making some pretty decent sized moves here. It's kind of flopping all over. 
the, uh, the place. Uh, Hertz did hold. So for now, I mean, we're a couple cents away. Let's on the left screen, let's actually leave Chesapeake up there because I want to see when it opens back up. So on the middle screen, let's check some of the other names we talked about. We talked about SKT Long. See if that would have worked. No is the answer to that question. So, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, okay, I thought that was 6.3. It's not, it's eight. Okay, so still though, that's a significant move down. It was up almost 20%. Now it's up 8%. So a lot of selling there. Uh, let's see, RPRX is not open. Let's go LEN in the middle screen. See how that's doing. That was a long based on earnings. So yeah, pretty much no matter how or when you took the entry to Lennar, uh, it's got a nice move up uh, in it. Not a three R type move, but certainly uh, puts you in the green kind of at least one R type move so far. So you keep an eye on that. Uh, we talked about Macy's long, so let's put M on the middle screen. Okay, Macy's uh, did not work long, so open at 8.18, down almost 30 cents. So, wow, look at that, that's just selling off hard. All right, uh, KSS is another retail name. Let's put that in the middle. KSS is following the same path as Macy's, so I guess the market's voting that they uh, retail names have been overly optimistic. Uh, let's put a uh, B, uh, let's see, uh, let's go back to BIG and see how BIG is doing. So that was a busted trade, but let's see how, again, that was long. So man, it barely hit that lower stop, but I think all of retail's getting drugged down there. So that kind of is no bueno. And then uh, Hertz is the one we're in off to the right. So that's kind of all I had for the shorts. Let me check the chat again to see if I missed any names that we talked about. Uh, let's put MTCH in that middle. Now, there wasn't much news on MTCH other than it's just got this huge short float. So well, that's kind of interesting action. And again, no headlines, but uh, that could be that short covering we were talking about. Uh, 89 up to 94 on no news. So if it is a short covering, when you think of your different setups, there are some delayed entry setups to where if you would watch a kind of a hated stock like match, do this sort of uh, move to where it starts dampening out and then it kind of stalls in an area, then what you can see is it kind of builds its own little top there around the 93 range, you would pick a stop up around 94 and then basically short it from there, thinking that it's just gonna sell off the rest of the day. Um, that's, that's an inverted check mark if you have heard much of that. So um, Chesapeake's back open, so that's a little bit interesting. So opened uh, kind of gap down to 15, then went all the way down to 1460. I would imagine that you're gonna see uh, some short covering here uh, maybe more people are hopping in at short, but gosh, that's a heck of a move out of the gate there. Down 20, is that 23% on the day, 20% or so. So heck of a move down there. All right, let's put SPY in the middle and we'll start talking about a few other things here. Okay, and you can zoom in on that a little bit. All right, I'm out in two minutes. So we'll stay on this chart till I'm out, but let's talk about the uh, the topic of the day is how to short. So I think everybody's clear on this. Uh, no new names today in the room, but just in case, uh, remember you have to, everything's backwards. You have to put in a short order where you're actually borrowing the stock. And uh, then you're taking that borrowed stock and selling it on the open market. And that means at some point you have to buy that back. Now, what we haven't talked about before is the interesting part of the dividend to where if you are short a name, say you would short Exxon Mobil that pays a six and a half percent dividend. And we only talk about it in terms of like day trading, but if you were to take a swing trade, meaning you're gonna hold that trade 
for overnight slash a week or so on some bad news, or maybe you bought it going into earnings or something like that, then you have to pay that dividend. So if you are short the stock, you have to pay out that dividend, which is kind of crazy. Um, but it's again, another name, another reason to, to not short the, uh, the name there. So, um, or not to hold it overnight anyway, or certainly hold it through the dividend payout. So, okay, over on Hertz, I'm on my last bar there. Uh, so we'll see where that closes at the end of this minute. Uh, and that will mark my trade and we'll see how it does. Um, so remember, and then when you have to short cover, you basically sell those or you buy those shares back and then give them back to whoever you borrowed from. So that's the basics of how to short. And then the short squeeze, as we talked about, I'll bring up Investopedia after this uh, bar closes out here. Um, the Investopedia uh, is where we'll go to we'll talk a little bit about the how they determine that short float slash um, and then short squeeze, how all that works, and then the dangers of being able to trade around something like that. So, okay, mine closed out in the red there, so it looks like 196. So 196 at a 203 entry, so that's three cents, seven cents into to a 10 cent. I have a check out of 10 cents. So uh, 0.7 R uh, for me over on uh, Hertz. So yay, I get to be the winner. Uh, that's one of those, yeah, I would, I'd be happy with the action here, so I would kind of hold on. So you know, we're we're up over. Um, actually, did I enter at two thirteen? I entered up at two thirteen. No, I didn't. Where did I go into this trade? Let me find it. Shorts at the five minute point. So yeah, it was five minutes when I went into it. So disregard. Yeah, point seven hour, but it looks like it's going to continue on and pay a little bit more. So let's leave this chart and go over to Investopedia and we'll go through the, uh, there's two pages on shorts in Investopedia that I'll show you. So pick the first one there. That's the short interest definition. So uh, go down to the key takeaways. If you kind of glance those while I'm talking about them, um, you can see that last bullet there is you know, typically published once a month, but NASDAQ does it twice a month. So you could be operating off of some old data. Obviously it's not tracking real time. I'll see if there's a place that does do it real time. That'd be kind of interesting. Um, that high short interest page might be updated real time. I'll check it tomorrow to see if it's the same as today to kind of confirm that. Um, but it's percentage of the float, which again are the shares that are kind of in play, if you will. Uh, so it's, not all the shares, but the shares that are out and openly traded. So when you think of, you know, however many, you know, what of those shares, it's the percentage of those shares that are short. There, I have seen short interest be over 100%. So I don't exactly know how that works, but uh, I know I've, I've seen it before. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Okay, a little bit more, you can put short interest uh, right at the top. There we go, that's uh, good, right there. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a uh, smaller float is kind of interesting right there towards the uh, the middle. So if a lot of the shares are walk, locked away, meaning they're not uh, in play, then obviously the law of small numbers there can affect uh, how much it could actually move there. Um, and that next paragraph down to the bottom, basically the fourth one on the screen, you can see what's called a days to cover. So it has an example there. If the short interest is a million shares, but it only trades 100,000 a day, that's 10 days alone of shorts buying the entire volume to cover. So, you know, the, the takeaway is right there in the next line, the greatest days to cover uh, potentially the bigger the short squeeze if they're wrong because they have to exit that position. And that's what happens in Tesla is you short Tesla and it starts screaming higher. Well, while people are buying it, you have to turn around and exit your short, which means more buying. So it can accentuate it to the upside. Okay, we can bring that one down. Let's look at the next one, the short squeeze definition. Okay, so basically it accelerates the stock's price. So while people are buying, when you have to bail out, you're basically hopping in with all the buyers. So 
that's what can cause that short squeeze. And that's why when you're in a trade, you, all of a sudden, if it flips against you, you can get knocked out real quick, which kind of sucks. But that's why if you get a trade that go, basically gives you your three R, you want to exit that trade because it can turn around and go back up against you. So uh, just something to, to consider there. Okay, we can bring that down and I will go over to the question. Let's go to TD Ameritrade back again with our three names. And spies in the middle, you can see the market's coming in a little bit. Um, is Chesapeake halted again to the upside? That is kind of crazy. So 14.6 up to, that's over a dollar move. I guess that's like an 8% move up. It could be halted again, which is kind of crazy. Uh, if you get a chance to confirm that, uh, please do. All right, so. Yep, halted again, thank you. Okay, so let's look at our Q&A and we'll wrap things up here for the day. Saw an article, investors approaching retirement painful decisions. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's a great question there, Predator. So kind of one of the reasons you just don't, you know, I use a roller coaster analogy with the market and the time to exit the market is, Never, you don't ever exit the market when it's just going straight up, right? You go with the flow. Uh, you know, you don't fight the Fed, you don't fight the market. You just simply, when markets are going higher, even though you're like, oh my gosh, this seems to be getting so overvalued, I should probably sell. Uh, well, no, you just go with the flow. And that's what, you know, and then really the time to get off the coaster is once the market peaks and starts going down and you get that five to 8% down, that's when you have to ask yourself the hard questions <clears throat> excuse me is do i get off the coaster we you probably aren't going to go completely to cash i mean that's just a that's such a huge move but you are going to get out of any of your speculative names when the market stops you know starts to go down five to eight percent and you might start building in some safety or you might start covering up some of your positions with covered calls you might take some other hedges um, but you're just not going to take everything out of play. So for folks that do the all or nothing, here's the major issue with that. And it's not, ha doesn't have anything to do with the stock market. It doesn't have anything to do with it, what you're invested in. It has 100% to do with basic money management. And you just don't make all in maneuvers because of the price you have to pay if you're wrong. So for folks that cashed out anywhere in the late March timeframe, right, whether it was before 23rd or after the 23rd, whenever they hit their max pain point and they went to cash, how do you reenter? You know, if the market screams higher 10%, 20%, 30 40 we actually had a 50% retracement. And these people are, you know, there's, there's a couple things at play. A, they just left a lot of money on the table, so they are, you know, upset about that. And B, emotionally, if you buy back in higher, now you have to, you're kind of admitting that you're wrong. So it's better to just say, <clears throat> it's better to tell yourself, no, it's going to be a W-shaped recovery. And you start, it's confirmation bias. You're, you're going to start watching TV and listening to all these people that are like dead wrong all the time that get all this airtime, which boggles my mind. Uh, and you're going to start believing them and thinking, no, it is going to crash. The second wave is going to take the mark, you know, you start hearing what you want to hear, you end up sitting on the sidelines and not making the money. Another thing when you sit on the sidelines is guess how many dividends you collect? Zero. Guess how much interest you collect? Zero. Uh, you're literally on the sidelines. It's like, like, wow, right? So you have to be right twice. You have to be right on the exit and you have to be right on the reentry. So why, why even play that game? Even as a professional, why play that game? Let's play a different game. Let's make some small changes up top and we have some cash, it might be different for everybody, but you're gonna have a pile of cash while you, the market goes down and you'll never time the bottom of the market right. You don't even try to, right? You just, okay, boom, we went past 30%. That's when I called it on March 22nd. I, and honestly, when I started putting money back to work, I said, I don't care if it continues down. I know I'm somewhere in the ballpark of the low. I happen to be one day early, but I don't care, even if I was a week early. I'm somewhere in the ballpark of the low, and that's all I'm really trying to do there to get the cash working higher. But for folks that are in retirement, if you take it all out, you are now not participating in the greatest wealth generation machine that, that humankind has ever known, and that's ownership of companies through the stock market. So 
um, it, it's just kind of crazy. You, you have to go back in, in my opinion. So if somebody's 62, they went to cash on March 23rd, it's like, look, say you have a million dollar portfolio, you went to cash, it's like, hand it over to somebody else, first of all, uh, because you're, you're probably not the right person to manage it, you're way too close to it. Hand it to somebody else who doesn't have all the biases you do, and they will slowly work it back in the market, largely with a conservative portfolio, largely into bonds and some stocks, and just stop sweating it nearly as much. You know, that's how you have to deal with that situation. And you look at that million dollars is now income generation. I'm going to go into 5% paying dividend stocks like an ExxonMobil and 5% bonds so I can get the yield and live off of it. So that's what I would have on that. Let's check out your comments. <clears throat> well, honestly, you could say, I mean, that's a, that, that's a great insight. And a lot of people have to exit the market and which, and do the wrong thing to be able to teach their kids to do the right thing, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, the kids, if you're below 50 and you can take it, you can hold through all of these downturns. You really can. Uh, and that's what your 401k does predominantly is it just holds, buy and hold through the big downturns. <clears throat> that's very passive. But if you have the time and you're not, you're not within, you know, five years of retirement, you can basically do that. No problem. Um, yep. I've read Siegel's book. He's on air <laughs> all the time. I heard him yesterday for a little bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. Any 20 year period, you bet. It's just these downturns. I mean, even Japan, if you take it outside the U S markets, they had a lost decade, right? And that's painful. Could you imagine sitting for 10 years and watching your portfolio do nothing? Yeah, that'd wear on you. Um, it, it'd make you ch check your, uh, <laughs> check your game plan. Right. But so what, you know, you're right over the 20 year period, it's going to be up. It's still more money that you're going to make sitting in the bank. I mean, you really have to just kind of let the machine that is the stock market do its work. So I think that's great insight. Uh, I'm glad they're running articles about that because uh, I'm sure that those, those people are probably pretty alone. They probably are managing their own money. They probably made an emotional decision and now they're facing the consequences and they don't have anybody to blame. Uh, another reason for some folks like to use an advisor is that way I can you know, point at that guy and go, that was his fault. He's stupid. I hate that guy. Uh, then I, you know, kind of transition the responsibility of it all of millions of dollars and put it on somebody else's back. So you have somebody to blame if it goes wrong. So anyhow, a uh, great question. So that's what I've got for today. Let's take a less look at the market here. And my system appears to be locked up. So let's kind of look at the spy chart up two and a half percent now. So, all right, looks like it's going to be a pretty good day for long portfolios. So feel free to check your app several times and uh, see what's going on with that. I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Thanks a lot.